Good evening, precious and beautiful people. Have a red light. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Screens blinking and flashing and all things going on. All right, we're still live. Anyway, uh, I'm here to do a Wednesday night broadcast. My plan was to flip it and go from YouTube live and share it to Facebook, but... I figured out I had a 24-hour waiting period uh, to go live. They give they just give you a 24-hour window. Once you click go live, they give you a 24-hour window when you're brand new. I guess to I don't know calm your nerves down. I don't know. But anyway, it's a good idea. That's usually what the Holy Spirit's doing. He's calming you down. I know I I have a lot of anxiety. I'm a little autistic. I didn't know I used my hands a lot until just recently. Uh, you know, it's just the way it is. I'm so blessed, though, to know that because I have an eight-year-old autistic uh, nephew, and he's so precious to me. I love him so much. Hey, Turtle! I'm sure you're probably not watching, but if you are, hi, Turtle! I love you, buddy. I love you. Uh, anyway, um, <clears throat> I'm a little late tonight uh, for distractions. Always a distraction somewhere. Enemies always got distractions. Uh, and there was a big one tonight, so I had to take care of that. Took care of that. And then, all of a sudden, I'm looking for my piece of paper that I wrote some notes down today on at work. And I can't find the piece of paper, so I'm looking over here at the Holy Spirit going, Yeah, you had something to do with that, didn't you? And he's like, we, of course. Anyway, I need a drink of water, please. Thank you. I forgot to set an alarm. Oh, I better set an alarm. Anyway, oh, there's a heart from you know who, my lady. Oh, holly, hi, my lady. Uh, Oh, set the alarm, John, John. Back to the alarm. Sorry. Sorry, I got a little sidetracked there. Talk about distractions. Anyway. Oh, what time is it? It is 9.50. So we can end at 9 or 10.50. 10.45. 10.45. There's the 10.30. All right. 10.45 p.m. 55 minutes from now, we should be finished. I hope, hopefully I have enough to talk about. I don't know where all my notes went. Yeah, you guys have to do that. I know, I know. Anyway, I do have some notes. Hallelujah. And praise the Lord Jesus. I got some notes. Uh, anyway, so, uh, YouTube went really well. The startup went really, I am so pleased with how YouTube really, it just lit up. And then it's it's falling back down now. But remember, if something doesn't die, it can't produce fruit. So, we had a big start. We had like 67 uh, views in two days. It's down to zero now. Uh, no big deal. Uh, we're, we, we went up to we're, we're 127 views and then the the 67 was in the two hour two day window period this is overall time now 127 views so far on youtube uh got great news i guess it's great news for me i'm happy with the news uh that we uploaded 25 videos to youtube Woo! 25 25 videos and only one video got flagged for copyright but it was a okay copyright. It wasn't a red mark. It was just a, a, a infomercial thing. It was just to let you know, let me know that Craig Smith, the, 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 the anointed worship leader, the, the music that I listen to all the time and air on the broadcast, all they said was, uh, his music is copyrighted, but he allows it to be played on YouTube. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Mr. Smith. God bless you for letting us use your music, because for people like me, 
I am dumb in music. I know I have a piano sitting here and a guitar, but it's faith. That's faith. I don't have anything to do with that. That's faith. The piano and the guitar are faith. That's it. Somebody, I expect, I don't know, the Holy Spirit hasn't told me this, but so, I expect somebody to come along that can play and maybe join the ministry and I don't have to depend on the outside music. But I don't care. As long as the Holy Spirit flows with the music, I don't care because He's going to take care of whatever it is out there that needs to be taken care of. Like a copyright flag, it was no big deal. They said it was no red mark. It didn't go against our account. Praise the Lord. I'm a little concerned tonight. I couldn't find any information on exactly what artist I can air on YouTube. So, once I upload this video to YouTube later... They'll have their, uh, you know, the machine will go through the video and it'll listen to the music and it will determine whether it's a copyright infringement or if it's an artist that allows their music to be played. I'm a little nervous about that. So, hopefully, the Holy Spirit's got it all in control, which, of course, He's got it all in control. What am I talking about? Let's go to Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Jesus who lives in me. Okay, now that we have that all taken care of, let's proceed. Woo! Man, I ought to just look at my phone all night. The picture on there is beautiful. Anyway, okay, that was YouTube. Uh I suppose, I guess, we can go into the music. Where's my... Okay, here's my list. I didn't finish my list, but I know who I'm playing. So, thank the Lord, I'm playing... I will feature... We are featuring Rhea Cell tonight. The song, Come to the Father. I, uh, I, I just love the song. I think it's, it's part of the ministry. It's the very first song that... I ever had to, you know, begin the ministry with. Uh, Rhea Sell said, here, here's my song. And I, I knew the anointing, can feel the anointing on the song. And I thought, wow, we'll just start the ministry with that. And I just, I don't know, love it. It, it, it really, it, it really bids what we want in this ministry. We want you to come to the Father through Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not by might, not by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. That's how you get born again, which is our topic. We're going into the subject of being born again. What is it? It's a whole lot. I'm telling you, it's took me 23 years to figure this much out. And I don't know anything except Christ crucified. Woo! Glory be to God. I know I have the mind of Christ, hallelujah. I know I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I know that. I know there's no condemnation for me because I'm not under the law. I'm under grace. That don't give me no right to sin, of course. I can't get just go out and do whatever I want under grace. Grace gives me the power to do what I can't. Grace gives me the power and the help to do what I cannot. It's in the Bible. Don't take my word for it. Take this word for it. Or 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 this word for it. Sorry, I don't have another one. Anyway, don't take my word for it. Come back here. All right. Where was I going? Oh, I wanted to go read that. Hebrews chapter 13. See, I told you the Holy Spirit doesn't know. To Maybe. Anyway. <laughs> the Lord is our helper. Yes. That's what I want. Make sure that your character is free from the love of money. I'm in verse 5. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. Free from the love of money, 
being content with what you have. For he himself has said, I will never desert you, nor will I ever forsake you. The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What will man do to me? So, what I'm saying is that grace, we can go to the throne. I didn't quite find the scripture I was looking for, but we can go to the throne of grace and find help in time of need. I don't want to Google it right now, and I don't want to rack my brain. So, you can go to the throne of God and find grace and in, in, in help in time of need. So, if you are a sinner and you hear my voice, I am as one speaking in the wilderness, turn ye from your wicked ways and seek the Lord while he may be found. That's us. That's the ministry. We're going forth. Isaiah chapter 61. We have been anointed to set the captives free. To preach the good news to the gospel, to the poor, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. The acceptable year of the Lord. That's grace. Okay. Right now, we are in the acceptable. All you need to do is accept, acceptable, accept what Jesus Christ did on the cross. And that's the first step to being born again. you got to believe what Jesus Christ did on the cross was for you. Not somebody else. I need a drink of water, please. Maybe a lot of people make being born again that whole big party. And it is for a little while until the devil comes back and says, Hey, what about that alcohol you was drinking? Don't you want some more of that? Or he comes back and he goes, Hey, what about that woman you was chasing? Don't you want to go chase her now? Yeah. Yeah, being born again, it's all... You know, almost a big bowl of cherries for a little while. Then, once you start stepping into being born again, I'm going to get into it, I'm not just talking. Once you get into being born again, then you're really going to start wanting to follow Jesus. Because He is the firstborn among many brethren. He is the example we are to follow. The Bible says that. The Bible says He is our example. So, we look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, and we start walking in being born again. And you really have to be born again. You have to take a flip. You have to turn everything all the way around and go into the Spirit of God. And leave all the fleshly world behind. Only thinking of spiritual matters. I'm going to go into all that. So now, I want to bid everybody to come to the Father.
Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Lord, fill us.
us here in the fire of your love. Burn in us. We desire you with all of our heart, soul, strength, and mind.
So, praise the Lord Jesus for the fire. I love the fire of God. I've been begging Him for it for years. And I was working to find the uh, a scripture, but I did not find it. Uh, I guess it's not the one I was supposed to find, huh? So, thank you for that wonderful worship music, Paul. Thank you, Mr. Wilbur. God bless you. I, uh, I don't have my stand tonight. It's out there. I'm not going to go get it. So you got me and a Bible. Hallelujah. That's all we need, right? It's a Bible. Uh, actually, I do want to look that scripture up. I am. I am. Says I am. I am. Says I am. Going to look this scripture up. I am. Where is my Google? Hello, Mr. Google. I am looking up this scripture. Hopefully. Prayerfully. Wait, 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 wait. Let me go with hot coal. I think that might work better. Hot coal. Oops. Yeah, okay. Bible. No, not bubble. Bible. Yeehaw. Love it. Love the word. Oh, see? You told me that right before I stopped. Right before I gave up, I heard this in my head. Man, I should have listened. Isaiah. Yeah, let me see if I was right. Isaiah. Isaiah 6. Isaiah 6. Let me go Isaiah 6. I love the word. Let's go on a tour of the word. Give me Isaiah 6. Isaiah Five. I found five. Six. Yay. Seven and eight. Seven and eight. Seven. Isaiah chapter six verse seven. Reads. Wait. Let me go to verse six. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a burning coal in his hand. Which he had taken from the altar with tongs. Verse seven. He, the seraphim, touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips, and your guilt is taken away, and atonement is made for your sin. Glory be to God! Hallelujah! Woo! See what the fire of God would do? If it can touch your mouth, it gets you saved. First, you got to touch your heart. you got to believe. you got to believe. To be born again... You must believe in the only one sent, Jesus. Okay, I don't want to read that. We're going to go to the famous book of John, the famous chapter of Born Again. John chapter 3, this is where Jesus teaches about being born again. This is where Jesus teaches about being born again. If I turn my phone off, it'll be distracting. Sorry. The famous born again chapter, John chapter 3. While you're turning there, I will get a drink of water, please. John chapter 3. Oh, you did want me to do that, didn't you? He wants me to tell my testimony first. He wants me to tell my testimony of how I became born again. So that when we go into this, maybe... Your mind will open up some to the spirit realm. Because that's where you got to go to be born again. you got to be born into the spirit. 
Then you leave the flesh behind. There is no more flesh. Once you become born again, you are totally spirit. Forget the flesh. The New Testament says, think on things above, not things on the earth. That means sickness and disease. That means cars and money. That means people, material wealth. But you set your mind on things above. What is above? Peace, joy, healing, prosperity, provision. Think on things above, not on things on the earth. That's a scripture. We'll get into that later. I don't know how soon. So, when you're born again, you're going to do a total flip into the spirit realm. And then you're going to meet the devil. You think I'm joking. I'm not joking at all. If you want to follow Jesus being born again, the devil is going to come at you. I've been thrown on the floor with health issues where I couldn't even get off the floor because the enemy wanted to put me down. I had to beg Jesus to get me up off the floor. Yeah. When you get born again, you're going to meet the devil. Because he's not going to want to lose you. But, I have great news. Wonderful news. Awesome news. Jesus has you sealed. With the Holy Spirit. When you get born again. Hallelujah. You don't have anything to worry about but grace. All you got to do is step into grace when you get born again. Now, there's a process of being born again. I'm getting there. I'm going to tell my testimony. It's an awesome testimony. Yes, it is. Oh, Lord. No wonder I can't find my piece of paper. Sorry. I'll get to that later. Anyway. It's an awesome time to put a plug in for the book. The Holy Spirit says, this is God's book, not my book. I don't care nothing about this book because it describes a man who was not born again for a long time. But then it describes a man who was born again, but he had some problems with the devil. He had some problems figuring out what the flesh was really it's some problems figuring out how to deal with it. So, the man of this book is the man previous to what you see. Because once we get born again, we are a new creation. And it's taken me a long time to actually figure out and get that accepted into my brain that I am a new creation and not who this book says I was. This book will change somebody's life. This book right here is about the supernatural just as much as the natural. I go from when I was born to now, well, a few years, a couple years ago. It's not pretty, but it'll change someone's life if they'll look past the past. So, get the book. In the book is my testimony. And my testimony of being born again is beautiful to me. I wouldn't take it for any other testimony. Ha! Anyway, the year was 2000. Well, let me back up. 1998. I married the second ex-wife. This was before Christ. I had not been born again yet when I married her. So we moved to Colorado from Arkansas. We were in Arkansas. We lived in Arkansas. We moved to Colorado. We were there two years almost. I fell in love with the mountains. Now, if you look around my office studio here, you'll see rocks. Uh, there's rocks. I, I love rocks. And if anybody knows anything about Colorado, they know that Colorado has mountains and rocks. I actually have a piece of dinosaur bone from Colorado. Woo, that's a pretty one. So, I love rocks. Fell in love with the mountains out there in Colorado. Beautiful, big, tall mountains. Garfield, 
Memorial, Grand Mesa, and the Monument. That's the four big mountains over three of them is the Monument. Memorial, Grand Mesa, and I said that other one and I forgot now. But anyway, beautiful mountains, rocks, rocks galore. I brought lots of rocks back with me. Praise the Lord. So I get over there in Colorado. I'm having a wonderful time in life. It's killing me. I'm getting killed by life because I'm trying to chase the American dream. If you're an American, you know what the American dream is. We're supposed to get successful with all the material wealth we can. We're supposed to have a great job and we're supposed to have a great family. And that's the American dream. Hallelujah. Anyway, I was working three jobs. One part-time, one full-time, and throwing a newspaper in the morning, each morning. So, I was very tired in life. And actually, I had been set free from alcohol in 1993. So I was free from alcohol until about the turn of 2000. So approximately seven year period, I went without alcohol or any other substances. And I'm not going to get into alcohol was my biggest problem. So I deal with alcohol. That's all the Holy Spirit wants me to deal with. So we're dealing with alcohol. So alcohol was not in my life for seven years, but bad company corrupts good morals. So my good moral was I wasn't drinking alcohol anymore. Praise the Lord. Because he had set me free supernaturally. And then I went the seven year period and then the ex- Wife drank beer all day. She had to drink alcohol all day so she could be with me, confronted with me. She didn't like me anymore. She didn't love me anymore. She actually hated my guts. So that's what people do when they want to forget people and get away from reality. They drink alcohol. And it does a good job for a night. Then you wake up feeling all lousy and terrible and hung over. So anyway, I went to seven year period and then life got to me. I was working three jobs and I went back to drinking. And other. And I listen to rock and roll music all the time. And I lived for myself. And I was always constantly trying to get life to work. Excuse me, I need a drink of water. And that's the way you do out in the world. You're always fighting to make this happen and make that happen and get more money and get a bigger car and a better car and a bigger home and a bigger barn and more stuff and stuff and stuff. And that's what you do in the world. You chase it. But if you're in the kingdom, you chase God and Jesus. Hallelujah. Thought I'd seen something move. Anyway, I got a window right there, so uh, I was looking out the window. Anyway, so I got back on alcohol, bad decision. So along about January or February of 2000, I was back to drinking alcohol again. Uh, probably not quite totally the way the uh, testimony goes in the book, but I'm being told to use sparingly words. So I was back on alcohol. Strung out, they say, whenever an alcoholic or somebody goes back on alcohol or drugs, they, they're, they're, and they, and, and they get hooked and it starts to not help them in life, then they can't stop anymore. The drugs are already gone. Alcohol is a drug. So alcohol got them bound. They can't do anything, can't get away. That's the way I was. I was bound by alcohol. And so, I didn't know how to get out of it. I did not care to know God. I didn't want to know God. I, he was the farthest thing from my mind. You ever heard that saying? That's an old saying. The farthest thing from my mind. 
God was the farthest thing from my mind. The Bible, oh, no, I don't have no Bible. I don't want a Bible. Why do I need a Bible? What good is that going to do me? I need help. I need somebody to pay these bills. I need somebody to take a couple of these jobs away from me and give me some money so I can quit working so much. I don't need the Bible, but anyway, so... I'm trying to fix some problems, trying to make the marriage better. Everybody does. Everybody tries to make their marriage better. Oh, we just got to make this marriage better. We just we should have never got into it in the first place. But Romans eight twenty eight, don't be throwing rocks at me yet. Romans eight twenty eight, all things work together for my good. If it's not your faith, I'm sorry, but it's my good. It, it all works together for my good. Killed some of John Jackson. Good. Thank you, Jesus, that it killed. Crucified some more John Jackson. Because I hate John Jackson. John Jackson is a criminal. And he's dead. Hallelujah. So anyway. The ex-wife was not home. I was going to go out to the garage to drink some beer. Among other things. And I was walking through the kitchen. As I walk through my kitchen, there's a kitchen sink here, and there's a kind of stove here, and a refrigerator here. And I get in here, and I'm thinking, and I, I I walk through here, and I'm aggravated inside. You ever feel aggravated inside? You just can't fix life? You're so aggravated. I was aggravated at life. I was tired of having to let the alcohol and the other stuff try to take care of the problem. So... I'm walking through the kitchen and I have a thought go into my mind. I have a thought go into my mind. Somehow, some way, I'm going to fix this. So here I am inside me saying somehow, some way, I'm going to fix this problem with this ex-wife, with these three jobs, with this alcohol, with all this other junk hanging off of me. And right there at that moment, I felt a pin in my chest, like somebody took this straight, it's got a sharp point on it, and somebody, I, it just, bing, just like that, stopped me dead in my tracks, just like that. And all the desire for alcohol, and the hatred for the ex-wife, and the disgruntledness for three jobs went away. Hallelujah! Glory be to God. Did not have a desire for alcohol again. I wish I could say forever, but it was for nine years that time. Anyway, back to the testimony. I got set free that day. God poked me in the chest with his finger. Jesus did. He's standing right in front of me. I can see him now. Stop me dead in my tracks with his finger. He said, boop, you're changed. Everything went away. All the hatred, the disgruntledness, the alcoholism, the desire... For alcohol, the desire to be angry went away. And this joy came over me. I felt this joy like I never felt. Like I was in a big old bubble of joy. Just bouncing around. Wee! So, at that moment, I was still standing there. And I thought, I said out loud, God just touched me. I got to go to church and praise Him. That's exactly what I said. And then I felt something, some some feeling. It started at the top of my head. And it started flowing down. I know now it was anointing oil. So this this oil type feeling, it's not real. I don't have real oil dripping off of me yet. He didn't pour real oil on me. But he did pour spiritual oil on me. He's the rock. He's the spiritual rock. He's the one we drink from. So he's pouring this oil on me to anoint me that day. The day he caused me to be supernaturally born again, he anointed me. I didn't know it. It took years to get to this point. 23 years to be exact. And it's been hell. But I tell you, I have swung out over hell on a bunk corn stalk and spit the devil's eye. Because I don't play games. I can't stand the devil. And he knows it. And the feeling's mutual. I can't stand 
Hey! So, here went my journey started. This oil, I felt it come down. This oil is flowing down. Really nice feeling. It's flowing. Stops right here. And I know I got to go to church and praise the Lord. I didn't fully know it was Jesus at that time or I would have been saying, oh, I got to go praise Jesus. It was God at that time. So, instead of going to the garage and getting a beer or whatever else I was going to do, I went to the garage and gathered up like 20 rock and roll CDs. I had the CDs, not the cassette tapes. I had CDs and I took them all to the pawn shop and said, here, you can have all this music. I don't need it anymore. I got God. Oh, I was on fire. I was on fire. I was on fire for God. I was on fire for Jesus. I didn't even know it. I need to drink water, please. All I knew was I felt like a brand new baby. All this stuff was gone. I didn't care if I had to go throw a newspaper in the morning or not. I didn't care if I had to go to that full-time job and then go to the part-time job and then try to get some more sleep and go throw the newspaper again. I didn't care. I was born again. I didn't quite know I was born again at that time. Had no idea that that phrase even existed. I didn't know what born again was. I didn't know what new creation was. I didn't know how, how to be a new creation. How do you be a new creation in Christ? Who knows? The book knows. So, that's one thing to being born again. you got to get into the book. So, my testimony is, I was so on fire, I went to church. That was a Wednesday. It should have been June 28th of 2000. That's the day I got born again supernaturally. I tell everybody I got supernaturally saved, not just saved. I didn't go down to the altar. I'm not bashing going to the altar. That's wonderful. I did go to the altar. I'm getting to that now. But I'm telling you, when God wants to do something supernatural in your life, you're not going to stop it and nobody else is neither. Because that was the second time He had touched me and delivered me supernaturally from alcohol. 1993 was the first time. Didn't know God. Didn't care to know God. It was the farthest thing from my mind. Didn't care. I don't want no God. I'm on, I'm on my trip down this road to do my business. I take care of my business. I don't need no God. So, in 1993, he set me free of the alcohol. And then in 2000, he set me free again. June 28th. Won't forget it. Uh, and So, Sunday... I believe it was July 3rd. I think. Anyway, Sunday, July 3rd, I went to church. And I walked in and I said, Hey, my name's John. I just want to serve. Where can I start? I just want to do something for the Lord. I saw on fire. I was on fire. I want to do something for Jesus. And the guy goes, Well, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up. There's a process here. Let me show you to your seat. So I went in. Uh, still feeling like a brand new baby. I was so happy. Oh, I was free. That's one thing about being born again. You get free. You get free from the law of sin and death. The law of sin. And death. We're going to get into that. It's all spiritual. It's all spiritual. Okay, so I went to church. Went in, sat down, listened to the sermon. Listened to the pastor preach. Uh, and then I went down and got on my knees. And asked Jesus to come into my heart with my hands wide open. And he did. Of course, he'd already been there. He stepped in there a few days earlier. Praise the Lord. But he'd always been watching over my life. So that's my testimony. There's another part of it though. I don't know why I always tell it backwards. I guess it's just the way he wants it. Because a few weeks before that, June 28th, 
I was working for the full-time job company, Muck and Concrete. If you know what Muck and Concrete is, it's a hard, tough job. So I was raking concrete, you know, while they, while they, uh, they formed, formed it and finished it and all that. So I got moved to the curb and gutter crew. Worked on the curb and gutter. That was a lot easier. Didn't have to muck as much concrete then. Praise the Lord. Uh, and so we were the curb and gutter crew is the curb and gutter. The curb is what's in the parking lot uh, where people park up on the curb. And then the gutter is what carries the water out of the parking lot. So I'm on the curb and gutter crew. And we're doing the we're working in the parking lot of the great big church huge church and they're building brand spanking new and one day the pastor pastor came out with some volunteers and they came out with a big barbecue pit and they cooked up some hamburgers hot dogs and I didn't know anything about God didn't want to know anything about God didn't care to know anything about God I didn't want to know anything about God it was a problem for me, if anything. At, at that time, that was just like two, three weeks before I actually got supernaturally saved. So, I'm out in this parking lot with my crew, and I'm on this crew, four or five guys. We're standing there waiting for the pastor to come around. He's coming around talking to the group, the groups of uh, people working out there. So, he comes to our group, and you know, I'm not really listening to what he's saying. But I heard a voice inside say, you're going to attend this church. And I was like, no, no. I snickered at the voice. I said, no, nah, no, no, I don't attend church. And that's what I told the voice. Just a few weeks before I got supernaturally saved. So I walked through the kitchen. Jesus poked me in the chest and said, hey, you're coming with me. You know, like, kind of like Peter in the Bible. Uh, said, you follow me. Uh, so, praise the Lord. That's my testimony. I love it. I did get baptized in a lake of water. Have my baptismal certificate in the safe. August, I want to say it was August 24th of 2000. I think. I have to look at the date again. It's 22nd, 23rd, 24th. Might even be the 28th. I don't know. Anyway, so John chapter 3. John chapter 3. We're going to see. Here comes a rhyme right on time. John chapter 3. We're going to see what it takes to be born again. Or what it looks like as Jesus is teaching. John chapter 3. And it's actually 1043. Ha! Rhyme. Right on time. Love the rhymes. I'm sorry I didn't ask for a drink of water. John chapter 3. Verse 1. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. A ruler of the Jews. So this is Nicodemus. He is a Pharisee. He's of the law. He's the one that's supposed to know the law and uphold it. He's a Pharisee. Verse 2, this man came to Jesus by night. He didn't want to come by day because he was concerned that he would get seen by the rest of the Pharisees and they would just ban him from the group. So, came to Jesus. Ten minutes. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, meaning teacher, we know that you have come from God as a teacher. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. So Jesus was walking and doing miracles. He was performing miracles because his father told him to. That's what he said. He said, I've come to do what I see my father do. So Jesus is going around. The Spirit is working through Jesus and he's doing 
performing miracles, no one can do these signs. Verse 3, Jesus answered and said to Nicodemus, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So, if you're not born again, you can't see into the spirit realm. You must be born again before you can see into the spirit and be born again. So, verse 4, Nicodemus said to Jesus, How can a man be born when he is old? Good question, right? So Nicodemus is thinking naturally. He's thinking in the flesh. He's only thinking of earthly things. Earthly things, okay? Wait a minute. I'm an old man. How am I going to be born again? Good question. When he is old, how can he be born again? He cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born, can he? So, now he's asking kind of a dumb question. Hey, Jesus, you know, I can't go back in my mother's womb and be born again. What are you talking about? So, Nicodemus' mind is only in the natural. Now, Jesus is going to Work to explain to him what the Spirit looks like. Jesus answered, verse 5, Jesus answered, truly, truly, and when he says that word twice, that means, hey, this is the truth. I say to you, Nicodemus, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So now Jesus is going into a little more explanation of what's going on here. Nicodemus, you must be born of water, which is in your mother's womb. You know, the, the whatever they call that fluid in the in around the, the baby, the fetus to protect it until birth. That's water. Remember? The woman's water breaks. So you gotta be born of water. And the Spirit. See that verse right there? See it? You must be born of the water of your mother's womb and of the Spirit of God. So, I'm born of my mother's womb until June 28th of 2000. And that's when I became a spirit baby. I'm a spirit baby. There is nothing about me natural. Nothing. This body is dying. Yes. But my youth is renewed as the eagle. I have to clarify that. I'm not old. I'm young. I'm 55 years young. I got a long way to go. Thank you. Because I've been born again. Hallelujah. I got eternity to go. Hallelujah. Step into the Spirit with me now. Don't stay in the natural. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now, in verse 3, notice, Notice the wording. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse 5 says, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So you have to be both. You're born of the natural, of course, but you have to be born again or you will not enter the kingdom. About time for me to stop because I'm getting hot. Like a fire. 
Verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. Stop. That which is born of the flesh, the water in the mother's womb is flesh. Okay, forget it. It's flesh. Watch this. Verse 6. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Totally spirit. Forget the flesh. It's over. You're totally spirit. Got that? Verse 6. Verse 7. Jesus knows what's going to happen. Do not be amazed when I said to you, you must be born again. So Jesus is trying to break it down real simple. Hey, slow your mind down and think about it. Look at who I am. You've already seen me doing signs. You've already said I've come from God. Can you see me? You must be born again. So Jesus was bidding him, step into me. I am the new. I am the born again. I can get you born again, Nicodemus. But Nicodemus' mind was stuck in the natural. Verse 8. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it. So, you, the wind is blowing all the time. You hear the sound, but you can't see the wind. Verse 8. You hear the sound of it, but do not know where it comes from and where it is going. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. So you can't see them being born of the Spirit. You can't see them as born in the Spirit. You see they're natural. So, he's saying... You're not going to figure it out. Just listen to me and follow my words. Verse 9, Nicodemus said to Jesus, How can this thing be? See, Nicodemus is still in the natural. He hasn't had his eyes open yet to see into the kingdom of God. I need a drink of water, please, and then I'm going to end here pretty quick. Because I've covered first base. First base, we see you must be born again or you will not enter the kingdom of God. There's only one other place you're going to be entering if you don't enter the kingdom of God. That's hell fire. How can these things be? Verse 10. Jesus answered and said to Nicodemus, Are you the teacher of Israel? Wait a minute! And you do not understand these things? So, that's where you might be right now. I'm going to stop right there. I believe. You don't want me to go on, right? No, I want to wait. Okay, I want to wait. I'm getting hot. I'm sweating. I gotta go. I gotta go. Woo! I'm hot. Thank you for the fire, Jesus. It's burning up in here. In here. In here. Anyway, uh, I love you. I love you. I love you. Ha ha. I didn't uh, end like I was supposed to, huh? Anyway, I just, I, I love you. I, I love. Perfect timing. He's always right on time. Ah, he's always right on time. Even with the notes that I lost. Thank you for taking them. Anyway. I, I love teaching. I love the spirit. I love that giggle. Uh, I, I, I love life now. I didn't for a long time because I'm telling you. When you get born again. The devil's going to come at you. I would go into that more later. So, one more time. I love you.